so in studio, and I joked when he walked in, I said, we just step off the tee box. He's decked out like he's playing golf. And I've always liked this guy. Uh, he's, number one, he competes his ass off. He is a steely, steely competitor, uh, a great player, but one of the really good guys on tour. 2003 U.S. Open champion. He's got 17 wins on tour. A lot of Ryder Cup teams and uh, shot a 58 somehow. I don't know how anyone shoots a 58. Jim Furyk, what's up, Jimmy? I'm doing great. How y'all doing? Doing well. So I, I want to start with and, this. Uh, 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 greens and regulation. That's how you do it. That's true. And he hit all of them. Hit at, all at, of them. at the Travelers. It's impressive. You know what? I, this is probably the wrong thing to do, Jim. Um, <laughs> I talk. We talk about golf a lot on the show. So when I'm playing, which is kind of frequently. Uh, if I'm off to a good start, which is rare, I'll look at my card. I'm like, all right, I got a bogey. I got a par. Somehow I, I made, amazingly got a birdie, bogey, bogey. And I'll start counting. And I'll say, okay, so I'm on pace. Maybe I'll break 90, 92. When you're in the middle of a round where you're, where you're threatening to shoot a 58, are you actually counting? And you're like, how do you know where you are? And how do you juggle staying in the moment and also try to break history, man? Well, you, you know where you stand. I, I made uh, six birdies and an eagle on the front nine. I turned it eight under. Um, I, I knew where I stood. And then I went out and birdied 10, 11, and 12. And mm -hmm. I was kind of joking with some of the media. I had folks coming out, you know, coming out of the media room that morning, running up to the 10th tee, kind of to follow the back nine a little bit, television cameras. And I was kind of giving them a hard time, like, wow, you know, something special must be happening. You guys are getting out of the media <laughs> room this early, <laughs> early on a Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> Give him a hard time, but you, you know where you stand. I was 11 under 312, and on a par 70, I'd already kind of gotten under that 60 mark. So it was trying. You know, I like to joke. I kind of played the last six holes, you know, pretty bad. I was only one under par. Yeah, you did. It. Based so, on what you shot, you did. But uh, you know, you, you know where you're at. And I think really, instead of putting the pressure on myself that you have to, you know, you have to finish strong. You have. It, it's more enjoying it. I mean, it, you don't get that opportunity very often in your career to to be in that situation. So I want to enjoy every moment of it and. And uh, and have fun with it. Is your job a joy every time you're out there, even when you're playing bad? Because right? we talk about this all the time, man. God, if my job was just, I do anything to if shoot I a was, seventy-five. If I, was, if I was Jimmy Walker, I don't <laughs> yeah. have to win anything really. Yeah. Just just be right there for the rest of my life. How great of a job would that be? Is there ever a bad day? Well, what you do for a living? It's it. You know, you have to pinch yourself once in a while. You see, guys, we get tired. You get on the road for too long. You're mm. away from your family. Uh, and guys start to get grouchy. You know, you see someone in a bad mood or snap, or and, and you realize it's time to take a week off and kind of reload. But uh, yeah, it, it's still work. I mean, it's still a job. And but we're real fortunate what we get to do. I mean, I've I've never had a boss uh, in nine to five. Uh, you, you know, I kind of get to make my own schedule and play when I want. So, uh, but yeah, you know, it's it's easy to take things for granted. It's easy to get a little spoiled. You know, I'm, at one time, Jim, I'm playing, is a while. I used to play lefty, and Tiki knows now I'm trying to learn to play righty. It's a long story that I won't bore you with. So but you I'm, were really good at lefty and you just got bored? I actually hurt my back. Okay. I hurt, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your story sounds a whole lot better, man. I hurt my back. And one time I'm playing, and I was fairly long since so I played baseball, whatever, but, you know, high 80s, low 90s, or a decent day, maybe an 85, 86, whatever. And I'm playing, and somebody says, man, you got a loopy swing. You got a little bit like Furick, you know? And. It, it 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 wasn't really a compliment, only because <laughs> I can't groove it perfectly like you do every time. How the hell do you swing the way you swing? Uh, you know, it was natural. It's the way that uh, I picked up the club and was extremely upright outside, rerouted the club. Uh, my dad's always been my teacher. He was yep. a golf professional when I was a kid, and uh, he realized I'm not very mechanically inclined. I mean, I mm -hmm. can't put anything together. I'm. It's just not my my forte. So he always taught me to what was natural because he thinks that's easy to repeat. You know, what comes naturally to you is easy to repeat. Mm -hmm. We just kind of try to fine tune and hone the fundamentals. So, you know, you still have to be on a good path to the ball. The club face still has to be square. You, you have to have certain fundamentals in your swing, but I, he just allowed me to, to kind of get there a little bit. Wow, I, don't think I, I don't think I knew that your dad was – that even makes it even more surprising because you would think if your dad was a – Pro or a, a, a teacher of of the game, he, he would he, like say, he, "No, we're not swinging this know, way." Son. Force you into, I right, do this <laughs> yeah. five thousand times until you do it correctly. You know, take it back. Yeah, it's true, true. And see, th there's a that's that's it's why that's why like academies and golf schools. That's why I'm not saying they're bad, but they scare me. Uh, you can't take thirty people and try to make them all look the same. BT because says this all the time. We're all Every swing on, on tour right now yeah. looks cookie cutter. Yep, they uh, all a lot look of the same. times. But you know, everyone's built a little different. Everyone's you know mind works differently. And my, my the reason my dad is such a good teacher is you don't take everyone and make them the same. I, I like to say Harvey Penick taught Ben Crenshaw and Tom Kite. Well, 
Kite's the most mechanical player I've ever been al alongside, and Ben might be the most feel you know feel oriented player I've ever seen. And and I talked to Ben about this at the Ryder Cup. You know, Harvey, he never watched Tom get a lesson, and Tom never watched Ben get a lesson. You know, Harvey was able, even when you know simple man, fourth grade education, but he was a genius. He was able to teach one guy through mechanics, one guy through feel and take advantage of their strengths, and that's kind of what my dad did for me. We're talking to Jim Furyk, who's kind enough to stop in the studio. Uh, obviously shot the 58 at uh, the Travelers Championship, which is amazing. He's won 17 times on tour. He's been on a million Ryder Cup teams, 2003 U.S. Open Championship, and I said this to you off the air, and I want to say it on the air. I caught, by accident, even though I watched the Golf Channel, at some point it's always like my son is, is starting to whack away. He's 20 months in. He, you know, he, he always does all day golf, 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 golf. So it's always on, and I stumbled upon your speech about the, with the Payne Stewart Award, and it was incredibly poignant, and I thought it really illuminated the person that you are. For those that haven't followed your career, uh, you don't even need to respond to this. I, I just think you're incredibly classy, uh, so it's really cool to have you here, and I, I thought the speech that. was awesome, man. Thank you. You nailed Thank it. You. Um, so let me ask you this. One thing that I see, and Tiki said about the the – cookie cutter approach to the academies and everything's got to be perfect and the perfect angle and all one of the reasons jim i think a lot of young players uh now phil obviously has this flair to his game sergio too an element and a lot of the european players uh sevi the creativity um just visualizing a shot and seeing it and it might seem completely unconventional to somebody else but they think they could do it and these guys practice these shots but i don't think a lot of players play that way anymore because they they, they are afraid of being ridiculed on TV. I think the coverage has almost forced players to be a little more safe than they used to be. Is that a wacky theory, or uh, are you buying that? Somewhat. I guess if, if you really – we do have a lot of players that, you know, turn on the Golf Channel every night. They want to hear what is said about them, what is said about the tournament. They, they read every magazine. Such as? Social media. Who's, who's that guy? Yeah. Who, who's like that? Uh, Come on, give us names here, Fury. The young on. kids on, on social you know, media. Some of the, like uh, – I've talked to, like, say, Carl Peterson and Tim Clark went to NC State together, and they'll room together sometimes or rent houses together on tour, and they say the Golf Channel is on 24-7. The really? Jordan Spies, the, those, those Jordan young too, kids, huh? I, I think, like the, you know, generally they grew up watching that stuff. They, they enjoy it. Um, so it's like their sports I, that's center That's not almost. me. I kind of, I don't know how you were with football, but, yeah. you know, I play, I go do my job, and then I want to get away. I yeah. want to take a deep breath and go do something else away from golf, so I'm recharged the next day. Only mm -hmm. if I played well did I watch Sports Center. <laughs> I, wanted, I wanted to see that. I wanted to and see then he watched it over and over yeah. and over and over. <laughs> hey, honey, look at me. Hey, was, honey, look at this cut in the open field. Hey, honey. That was pretty good. Detroit, Man, that was <laughs> awesome. Hey, was that me? Look at these hands, honey. The yeah. Troy Aikman ringtone. <laughs> exactly. You, you know, I, I, I feel your demeanor. Right, and uh, <laughs> I just got that. That was funny, Detroit. That was good. I, I feel your demeanor, right, and it's just a calmness. Is that necessary to be good at what you do? Because I think about other sports. When we have tons of athletes and different folks come and sit here, some of them are really frenetic. You know, you just you feel their energy coming off of them. But you're kind of chill, right? Are there I'm, guys on I'm, tour that do it the other way? I'm comfortable. Yeah, I think you have to play in your own personality. You have to swing in your own personality. Um, you know, we have guys that are, you know, you have Patrick Reed. I don't think we really want to calm him down. <laughs> I love Ryder that. He's Cup. so want, good for the Ryder yeah, Cup. We, awesome. just, boy, Pat. we just want to point and, you know, point and kill. You know, just go go get him. <laughs> uh, and he's going to play with a passion and a fire that's great. And then, you know, I, I'm a laid back, pretty loose, pretty calm. I play best when I'm not really showing a ton of emotion, which it's impossible to do at the Ryder Cup. But, uh, yeah, you kind of play in your own style. I think it helps you out a lot. A guy like Reed, and we needed that for Team USA, Absolutely. and he was awesome. Oh, boy, they, it was a great course. The event was phenomenal. Great that we won. But I could see, while it, it galvanizes the United States during the Ryder Cup, I could see that pissing some guys off if it's day three of the Masters or if it's day two of the U.S. Open or if it's another tournament. If you're playing with Patrick Reed, is that uh, a little bit of an annoyance, the way he kind of – Conducts himself because well, he's, he's I'm out sure, there a I'm little sure, bit. Well, but he's not like that individually. You're not, you, you know, he's going to show fire and emotion and passion mm -hmm. during during an individual event. But it's not annoying at all. I think okay. I think it's 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 great. Uh, but it's it's ramped up a number of different notches in the Ryder Cup. I'm sure it's annoying to the other team when mm -hmm. he's pumping fists and waving fingers. And but you know, I watched Rory, you know, with the with the bow and the. Uh, Sergio was enticed. Did you think the, it was the a shushing little shushing the crowd that came from Patrick? Yeah, you know, that's all part of the Ryder Cup, and that's uh, I think at the end of the day, I mean, the greatest match there was a thousand great matches, but you know the Rory Patrick Reed match on Sunday. You know, I wasn't following that match. Tiger had had kind of those groups up front. Mm -hmm. 
I, I mean, I was jealous. I wanted to see that match. Yeah, yeah. I kept hearing over the radio what was happening yeah. and all the birdies being made. And they're kind of, you know, at the end of the day, they're going to give each other a hug and a high five. And it's a handshake. There's a mutual respect there because they were those two were, you know, as good as they were our best players on both sides. It was, uh, it was fun to watch. BT's giving you uh, crap about coming dressed in golf attire. I see all the sponsors, Five Hour Energy, RBC, yeah. Consolation. The most important one, though, web.com. Tell us about web.com. You had a good, you had a good eyesight from over yeah, there. Well, they're big enough. I mean, you're shoving them down our face here, Jim. I mean, we can't miss them. I, you could be on the tee box. I could see them from the green. Well, I am here. I am here to talk about web.com a little bit. And uh, we talked about me not being very good mechanically. Well, <laughs> from an IT perspective, I'm awful. So I've got a, a great team on the golf course, a wonderful caddy and fluff. My dad's my teacher, on and on. Uh, web.com is my partner off the golf course. So I need a website. I'm a small business. Uh, in my own entity as a PGA Tour player. Uh, I need a great website to connect with my fans, to connect with my sponsors. And my wife and I also have a charitable foundation, the Jim and Tap of the Furyk Foundation. They designed our website for that. And it's just a wonderful team of people. There's a personal touch. They have a call line 24-7. You can call and talk to someone about your website. Uh, it, it really, just to have someone to design, write. I mean, you're all in or all out. You, you can design your own site on their website, or you can, you know, hire their specialist. Someone can design it, write it. They have some, uh, you know, e-commerce specialists. But uh, it, it's nice to to have someone help you with that. And then the important part about a website is you want it to look good, nice, clean. Yep. But you want people to be able to find it. Yeah, of you course. Know, get in the search yeah, engines and, uh, and help you out. And that's, that's their specialty. So uh, it's been a great partnership for me. And, and I uh, just want everyone to go out there and uh, maybe check them it's, out. It's the, web. Per, it's the web. Perfect, com. perfect URL for the Internet. No, it's com. Look, in college, I was an MIS major, so designing right? designing websites and things of that nature was my, my MO. Still doing it? Well, my company does, yes, but okay. I don't personally because I played football for 10 years and the, the technology it's passed changed. me by. Uh, but I know I know exactly what you mean. I remember in college, I had no idea what I was doing. And if someone could have helped me back in 1996, it would have been fantastic. They just weren't, mm-hmm. No one was around because right. nobody was programming in HTML. Now everybody is. So web.com, good shot. Good shot there. Oh, we'll definitely obviously. tweet it out for you for sure. Um, a couple of quick hits, Jim. Jim Furyk with us in the studio. We know you're a PA kid, big Steeler fan. Real mm. quick, you worried about Ben? When do you think he comes back? I know you're a devout uh. Steeler fan. I mean, if, if maybe in four weeks, they've got a bye week. They've mm. got Pats, a bye week, the Ravens and the Cowboys. Look at this guy. Knows the whole bad, schedule. Talking about a bad, bad, a ba- bad, bad a... month. But there is a week off. And those there. aren't games he should miss. Maybe, uh, you know, maybe if, if four weeks off and kind of come back, you okay. know, maybe go one and two or two, you know, two and one would be. See, a, you know, you know how you were counting on your scorecard? Mm-hmm. That's what he's doing with the. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I like it. I've been looking ahead. I've been trying to, you know, loss. bad loss at Miami, now four and two. So you're kind of scratched. We're still leading the division. So yeah. Yeah. No, I know you are. But you notice I got the we in there, too. Oh, that's okay. I do that with the Jets, although that. I don't know if I want to anymore. Um, when do you think we see Tiger tee it up, man? Seriously, when is Tiger Woods going to come back? That was interesting with the, you know, committed to Napa and then decommitted. Um, you know, hopefully we see him before the end of the season. Uh, I doubt we, we're not going to see him in, like, China or Malaysia, I wouldn't think. Um, you got the Vegas event. Uh, you got Mayakoba in Mexico. You got Sea Island. Um, you know, maybe one of those three. But he's got his own event the first week of December. I know he does. Uh, down there at uh, uh, Albany, I guess, yeah. in, in the Bahamas. And, and I... I would be hard-pressed to think that he wouldn't play there. Uh, and if you had one tip before you walk out of here for our audience, the average hack golfer, yeah, what is it? Well, there's a lots, of, lots of good tips. One, one tip. I mean, the I one see, that will I really help. I see a lot everyone. of awful grips, but uh, most, most, most amateurs don't play within themselves. You know, you give them a seven or an eight iron, they want to tell their buddies they hit the eight iron. You know, they, <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're trying to You're hit right. it too far, You're right? Uh, and they come up short a lot. I mean, mm-hmm. if most amateurs charted when they hit an iron shot. If it came up short of the pin or long of the pin. I bet you nine out of ten times it's short. So, uh, you know, swing within yourself. Take a little more club. Club up. Yep. There he is, Jim. Really, really good to see you, man. Thank you, Jim. A lot of respect for you, pal. Keep doing your thing. One of the greats, Jim Furyk.